This is a second video about organizational patterns. In this video, we will focus on different organizational patterns such as description, division, and classification. A common technique in writing is to use description. Description is a way to communicate to your reader what you are thinking or seeing or visualizing. It is a mode of perception. In an objective description, you are focusing on the facts or the literal, exactly what you see or hear or what happened. Unlike a narrative, you're not telling a story, but you are describing to the reader something that is important to your argument. A subjective description focuses on what the writer thinks or feels rather than the literal facts. Why would you use a description in an academic essay? You might use a description to strengthen your core idea or to provide concrete evidence to support your argument. Alternatively, if you are using a subjective description, it might be used to create an emotional response in your reader. How do you write a description? Start by pre-writing, jotting down the sensory details and the point of your description. Then you need to think about your purpose and approach. One method is to create what's called a dominant impression. A dominant impression is an overall image or idea that ties the details of a description together. A dominant impression is subjective, involving personal opinion. Professional writers often take a common object and use it in an uncommon or unusual way to create a dominant impression. So they may compare, perhaps with a simile, metaphor, or a symbol. Another way is to use the is not technique, saying what the thing is not. The bottom line of effective description is to select concrete details and state them in an unusual way. This means you need to avoid overused words and phrases such as beautiful, nice, and so on. These types of phrases will tend to be bland and really are not very descriptive. After that, you need to search for a way to unify the details in a way that creates the desired impression and makes a specific point. For example, saying the tomcat hissed his displeasure is much more vivid than saying the cat was upset. So when you use description, you need to create a clear vantage point. From what point of view are you writing the description? You also need to use clear transitions to and from your description. Don't just plop in a description without contextualizing it and making clear to the reader why you are including this description at this point in your essay. You need to signal to the reader the point of the description. Your description must also be well organized. It will need an introduction and conclusion as well as clear organization and development. Since every description must have a purpose, you will need to think about how the description will contribute to and support the central point. The central idea or main idea in turn governs the organization and development. The point of your description may be explicit or it may be implicit in the introduction. Then you will need to decide on a way to organize your description. There are five types of orders that you might use. First, with spatial ordering, you organize your description based on the space around you. For example, what do you say, see when you walk into the it walk in through the door of a particular room. You describe each thing as you move through the space. Second, with chronological order, you describe events in the order that they happen. This is the one that you're probably most familiar with. Third, you can make a description from abstract to concrete. You start with an abstract idea, such as what it means to be free, then you move to something concrete, such as what free speech means or what it's like to be in prison. You can take the opposite approach of starting with something concrete and moving to an abstract idea. Fourth, you can start with a general statement, then move to a specific example, such as stating that teachers play an important role in helping students to achieve success. Then you can move into specific examples of exemplary teachers or a teacher that helped you to achieve your goals. And then you can also do it vice versa, start from something specific to move to a general idea. Finally, you could compare two points of view. Now, the method of organization that you choose will depend on your topic. You will need to use your own judgment in making this decision. Sometimes it will be obvious. For example, most history essays will be organized chronologically, either through the whole essay or within individual paragraphs. A spatial organization might be used in an essay that includes a description of a place or a building, and so on. You have to use your judgment. 
Another method of organization is classification. In many essays, you will need to classify items or ideas or facts. You may decide to group related items, so this is called grouping, or you may need to break an item into component parts, which of course is dividing. When you are grouping and dividing, you must think very carefully about your organization. You may need to classify something based on the purpose of your essay or based on your audience. Always be clear as to your reason for choosing a particular approach. Make sure things do not overlap. You want to make sure that everything is very clear and precise. When you group things together, make sure the categories are big enough to have at least three or more points for discussion. If your category is too narrow, you will not have enough substantive detail for a good paragraph and a good argument. Make sure all the parts in your category are parallel. So this is parallel structure. You must use a common principle of selection. You all know the common phrase, you can't compare apples to oranges. In other words, the parts in your category must be similar to each other. You must also make sure that you have a logical system of organization. Make sure that all the parts fit together in an organized whole. And be clear in explaining how and why you've made the decisions regarding this organization. Finally, make sure that all the categories and parts are arranged in a logical order throughout the essay. If there is no logic, your reader will be confused. Now here's a quick little activity. In this activity, you must determine the organizing principle then figure out which item does not belong. In the first one, the topic is shoes and there are four categories, running, golf, leather, and bowling. So the topic is shoes and there are four categories. What is the organizing principle? So the organizing principle is type of activity. They're all, or most of them are shoes that you use in a particular activity. In that case, which one does not belong? course this is leather. In the second example the topic is jobs. The categories are weekly, monthly, hourly, and summer. So here if you think about it what's the organizing principle? The organizing principle is pay period and summer does not belong because most people do not get paid by the summer. You get paid by the week, by the hour, by or by month. The third topic is animals, and the categories are dogs, rabbits, cats, and whales. In this case, there are a couple of possibilities for an organizing principle. One could be pets, or it could be animals with four legs, or it could be animals with fur, or it could be land animals. In all of these cases, whales do not belong. Finally, this fourth topic is relatives, and the categories are aunts, sisters, uncles, and nieces. So what's the organizing principle here? In this case it's female relatives. So which one does not belong? Uncles does not belong because these uncles are male relatives. So as you're organizing make sure to choose useful categories and then to provide specific examples for your categories. So, the thesis statement of a classification essay usually includes the topic being classified and how it is being classified, or the organizing principle. Sometimes the categories are named. Here are three examples. In this first one, the topic is students at UOIT. The organizing principle is wide range of races and ethnicities. But this is pretty vague. So, we have the second example. In this example, the topic and organizing principle remain the same, but some specific examples are given. These are the categories based on the organizing principle. In the final example, the wording is a bit more sophisticated, and the topic and organizing principle is combined. So in this case, the organizing principle in the topic is UOIT's diverse student body. The categories are also provided. So in this case, it sounds a little different though. UIT's diverse student body is composed of, and then you list your categories. As you write your topic sentence, make sure that your organizing principle is clear. 
Also ensure that your topic is clear and specific. The next step would be to include a thesis that is related to your topic and method of organization. Ask yourself, why is this topic important? Who cares? We will look specifically at thesis statements in another video. In the meantime, here are some tips. No matter what method of organization that you choose, you will also be using other techniques in a research essay. So don't forget to analyze and explain as well as describe. If all you do is describe something, then you're unlikely to do a good job overall. You're not going to get a great mark. Most essays require analysis. Good analysis and good arguments will make the difference in terms of grades, the grades you receive for your essays. The text by Graf and Birkenstein, uh, they say, I say, gives some good techniques for integrating different organizational structures that will help you to correctly use other people's ideas alongside your own. For example, the because technique is useful in making sure that you provide good explanations for your points. While it is sometimes okay to start a sentence with because, make sure you do not end up with a sentence fragment or an incomplete sentence. Graf and Birkenstein also note that your thesis statement can point to your method of classification. As always, make sure to use specific details, reasons, examples, and so on to develop your main point. Finally, pay attention to transitions between your points and make sure that all elements in your description are parallel. So in this video, we have discussed how to write descriptions as part of an essay. We have also looked at ways of grouping and dividing or classifying in essays. As you move forward in your writing, remember to pay attention to the details about organization. Thank you for listening.